<laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know what? I forgot to do it yesterday, and I usually do it on a Monday, and I totally forgot. There's your intro, Dragon, if you guys are waiting for it. You could, you could also maybe sub that in for a Jurassic Park dinosaur. That's what you call a segue in the business. Hey. If you are a Collider yeah. fan, and you are out there, and you want to watch Jurassic Park with us at an actual movie theater with seats... And oh. stuff. Oh, a movie theater well, with seeds. Yeah, that they case. also have popcorn. Crazy, right? Popcorn spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Come on out to the Arclight Hollywood. Join us. There'll be a movie talk QA. Maybe some of your favorite TV talk personalities will be there. Uh, I don't know if I've been invited. I'm just, I keep throwing my name out there just in case <laughs> they want me to talk to people. Uh, usually not a great idea, but be there. You guys saw the graphic. Was it August 29th? <laughs> August 29th, there it is, 7.30 p.m., Jurassic Park, Perry Nemiroff getting eaten by a dinosaur. <laughs> dinosaur, be there. Collider fans, uh, we hope to see you out on August 29th. Okay, Dino let's get into some, some Collider TV talking a sassy Tuesday. Back on the show, the ginger mother of dragons. That's Grace Hancock. Oh, uh, hey, guys. <laughs> Welcome to Sassy Tuesdays. Please tweet me your Twitter questions at Mrs. Grace Face. Ha Gra G Grace Face? Mm -hmm. You almost had it. Grace we almost, face. We almost got it's it. like I stumble always <laughs> <laughs> at Mrs. Grace face. That's me. Uh, hashtag Definitely. Collider TV talk. <laughs> Who's this guy? <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually a, a gal. Yeah. Uh, it's the lovely Emma hey, I, I don't discriminate. You know what? It's true. I actually, being from the Northeast, I believe that everybody is just guys. For me, me too. I, I just refer up, to guys? everybody as, yeah. Hey guys, what's up guys? That's yeah. definitely that's definitely a vocal tick of mine. So <laughs> I, I, I'm you. feeling you, Grace. I'm feeling thank you. you. Thank you. you. I appreciate Emma. the support. Now, usually David's here on a Sassy Tuesday, but Emma is here on a Sassy Tuesday. Oh, David will be here tomorrow to do some Great British Breakdown. But today, Emma will be doing some animation a little bit later. Uh, but Grace, what's first up here on the docket? All right. So yesterday, the Duffer Brothers confirmed that Stranger Things is going to have a third season. We did not know that. And they also said it's going to have a fourth season, but that will be the last of the whole series. Yes. I was surprised to hear this. Well, here's the thing. I was surprised that they even got a season two. Not that they got a season two. No. But that they were doing a season two because it felt really so much like an anthology series. Although there were Fair. open ends. There were open ends sure. to it. And like it's subject to uh, translation or whatever. But I like the fact that they said, I don't know how many seasons we can keep doing in this tiny town in Indiana. Right. Where they're like, Are there's another Demogorgon in this place. Right. Yeah. So um, I like that they... and. Listen, it goes to the, the Walking Dead complaints that David Griffin always has. It has, like, I was talking about with Ray Donovan yesterday. Some of these shows need an ending. They milk it forever. They yeah. milk it. It's Absolutely. not a comedy. It's not a sitcom. It's not. This and, is... and as you say, Josh, the way that season one ended of Stranger Things, I would be surprised if the entire series didn't end in a similar manner. Because yeah. remember, this is based on horror films. Most horror films aren't wrapped up neatly with a little bow. True. You get a satisfying right. ending, but you also get a, oh shit, yeah. moment in the end. And, yep. I, and I think that had Stranger Things not gotten a second season, the first season stands alone really well as a complete story, but I I'm agree. obviously very excited about season two. It looks really great, and I really respect their decision to go, it's going to be four seasons, and that's it. Well, I, and I feel yeah. like as a creative person, you want to go out on your own terms sometimes, exactly. especially in a show like this. Yeah. Well, go out on a high note, not, yes. you know, mm -hmm. go out with strength and integrity, not like when it's kind of watered down and you're kind of grasping yeah. at things. Yes. I mean, nothing so. is worse than waffling around, yeah. trying to keep making more story, and then suddenly getting canceled when you didn't didn't necessarily really even want to keep doing that story in yep. the first place. Like yeah, Walter White exactly. is still cooking meth 10 right, years exactly. later. Right, exactly. Like, <laughs> Jesus, the ATF are terrible. The DEA is worse. Uh, but yes, no, I, 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 again, it's pretty cool. And, and I dig, and uh, now we see like a big arc. Yeah. I love a good big clean arc. Yeah, like and I kind of like knowing that now. We've only seen one season, and we yeah. know that it's, it's not like, are they going to get picked up? Or are they going to try to mm -hmm. awkwardly like flash forward 10 years? And like, eh. it's like we know that at the end of four, we're done. Done. I appreciate that. All right, let's move on. All right, so Netflix has given an eight-episode second season order to Friends from College. The renewal comes just a month after season one was released this past mm -hmm. July. Uh, the show is sprinkled with like a super talented cast, but it kind of got meh reviews. Um, none Mess of us here up. loved it. None of us here hated it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's kind of an interesting choice to uh, renew it this quickly. Uh, it has a, a very flattering 24% on Rotten Tomatoes oh. as of this morning. Burn. Yeah, no you know idea. what's really interesting is I feel like critics really hated it. Really hated it. We had our complaints about it, but didn't think it was as bad as the critics did. It's yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. one of those shows where you look back on it, you're like, 
that part was pretty funny. Yeah. That yeah. wasn't. <laughs> The stuff that with Fred Savage pretty. is pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fred Savage. Yeah. And then Grind- I was so sad when Grinder got canceled. I thought it was so funny. <laughs> Grinder was actually kind of entertaining. It was so funny. Yeah. I love Fred Savage. But, yeah. but I agree with you. It like it, it had its moments of fun. It had its moments of like, eh. I really feel like there was there was a lot of shuff- stuff that was like jammed in there that didn't need. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That arm gesture just got me. I'm sorry. Sassy Tuesdays. That's and I, you know where I was going to go with it? I'm going to have a sip of this. I, I was going to go. It was like kind of jammed in there. Like the affair. like I, it, <laughs> Which is totally a double entendre. My bad. But like a thing you didn't really need. Like you didn't need that affair no. to make this a fun show. Like I really kind of wish they all had their own little like singular problems. But the, that affair kind of ruined the whole I, series for me. Because the, the Asian girl and her acting in like the gym so amazing. funny oh yeah. my god New York and when Anne she Basket. was in the like gender reversed streetcar named <laughs> desire I mean because <laughs> just so anybody confused. anybody that went to theater school like and and then like yes. pursued theater at all as an adult you you know you have been there <laughs> it's too, it was yes. too, it was too real uh, it's too real <laughs> it's so it it's so real, real. Yeah. like Ken always asked me uh, on an episode of the Napsock Files which you can check on on iTunes uh, he's like huh. why did you leave New York what didn't you like about New York I was like well in LA you can actually like do a lot of creative things with people that have similar like mine in New York you have to do like a one man show about the the political role reversal of the knife fork and spoon and how it applies <laughs> to like communist Russia it all has to be like a thing within yes. a thing within the fucking thing yes. right 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 and it's just like here I'm like it's a joke guys. right yeah it's a fucking I think joke that's for me why I always gravitated towards musical theater because it tended to be a lot less yes Vague, yes. Like, it knows what it is. Yes, yes, yes. No, I and friends from college again. Like I didn't hate it. I totally agree with you, Josh, about the affair thing. It was so unnecessary, and I think because of the affair, so many people got distracted from all of the really good elements of the show and right. just went, "This is a show about." Horrible people who do right. horrible things. And right. they weren't across the board horrible, but unfortunately that horrible storyline was at the center of this. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And yeah. the woman who was involved in that affair was insufferable. Yeah. Oh yeah. One hundred percent. And that's a shame because she's actually a very talented actress. Oh, I yeah. think she was just giving her given a bad thing in the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. hard to make that that writing likable, I think, yeah. too. All right, what's next? Um, all right. So CBS has landed the single cam comedy Things You Should Already Know, based on the upcoming illustrated guide to dating for millennials by Ben Schwartz and Laura Moses. It follows a group of millennials who realize they have to put down their phones and learn how to be actual adults if they don't want to die alone. <laughs> <laughs> This sounds great. That's literally what That's, it is. I love uh, it. And the, and the book, as we saw, is called Things You Should Know About Dating, You Fucking Idiot, is set to be released this fall. I will be reading this. I yeah. think that like people have said that to me before. Like, I'm like, sure they have. Back, to your back face. in the day, man, I had some... <laughs> I, c- I could write a dating book. I mean, book. behind your back for sure, but maybe to your face. I think my. The, I have not. The, the title of my dating book would just be that emoji with the hand of the face. <laughs> yep. That would. That, like face palms? Yeah, the face the palms. Face like, palm. oh, Josh, no, you didn't. <laughs> it's surprising I've made it this far. Um, yeah. and, uh, mine would just be the little emoji with like the eyes. This the big. wide eyes. I think, I think mine would be the like side eye emoji. <laughs> And then, and then the, the sequel of mine would just be the poop emoji. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, what would be amazing is a, a book a book about dating where each chapter was an emoji, an emoji? and a story about yes. why that emoji applied to that date. Shit, All don't right. take my idea, world. <laughs> we, don't take it. The three of us need to co-write this immediately. Yes. I like it. But ben, listen, Ben Schwartz, uh, I don't know a ton about Laura Moses, but I do know Ben Schwartz is Jean Ralphio. I was, he was great in the show House of Lies, which that show kind of, again, one of those shows, it's like kind of just needs an ending. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was he was Wrap really fun in that show. A, a very good ensemble kind of player. Looking forward to seeing him kind of in a more lead role. So yeah, I mean, he just got he was recently nominated for the earliest show. I mean, he's doing a lot. He has his hand in a lot of different yes. things, and he's seems to be like a super solid talent. Like yeah. on all things that he's working. I on. I think so. Ben Schwartz is another one of those really great examples of the kind of talent that we idolize living in LA. Because to us, I think we look at Ben Schwartz and we're like, oh my god, he works so hard. He's accomplished so much. Yeah. And I feel like people maybe from the outside don't realize how hardworking he is. So yeah. I agree with you. Like I, I know they're I, like, oh, John Ralphio. It's like no, 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 no you don't write. He's and, created the show. And like, he's, oh my god! And for a long time, he was doing a show at UCB every single Sunday yeah. night. And I mean, yeah, I, I just really, I, really talented. Yes, and very hardworking, and and just really, really funny. So I, the I'm only thing that worries glad. me about it is the, the three letters CBS. I yeah. don't. They don't have a great. They don't have a great single cam comedy uh, background. No. Uh, this is yeah. a show actually where and normally. Anytime anything is on NBC, it is a death sentence. Yeah. 
But this show sounds like it could good, be a good NBC show because NBC has had some really good single camera 100%. comedies. 100. But mm -hmm. it could also fall into the "you're the worst" kind of category at FX, which I really enjoy. I like that show. Right. This could, I think, would be much better served at a station like that. But hey, if CBS can pull it off, you know, color me humble pie. Yeah, maybe so. this can be like their kind of like flagship moving yeah. Yeah. in a better way in that direction. <laughs> we can get rid of Big Bang Theory. <laughs> oh, if only. My, my Kickstarter is <laughs> suffering terribly right now. But. <laughs> All right, what's next, Grace? All right, so um, NBC will not be moving forward with its planned reboot of Xena Warrior Princess. NBC Entertainment President Jennifer Selk, I apologize if that's incorrect pronunciation, said to THR, I'd never say never on that one because it's such a beloved title, but the current reincarnation of it is dead. Dead. Uh, what, what's your war cry like? Oh, la, 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 la. oh yeah. And then like that? Yep. yep, nailed it. Yep. So I got Dragon and I got Xena. Y'all are welcome. I know. Um, well, I, 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 listen, I, I think I was, oh, I watched Xena here and there mostly because I was like a teen to like early, like not even a teen. Like <laughs> I thought was she was early, high. And I was like, whoa, boobs. <laughs> hey, Lucy Lavas, what's happening? Uh, and so like I would, my, I would be down in the base and my dad come down. He's like, turn off the Xena. Like, <laughs> we know you don't care about the plot, you dumb idiot. You're just down here. My mom. So. So, but I never, here's the thing. I think it was in such like a perfect time, like Kevin Sorgo of Hercules. Oh yeah, Gina Marie Princess. It was like a perfect time where you could convince people that like Santa Clarita was like the deserts oh, of, of the Saharans, oh. like it was ancient I deserts, and it was it was fun. It was good. It was like that, like the guilty pleasure TV on USA or whatever it was on. Yeah, I don't know if now it would if Translate. it would fare if right. it wasn't like that CW Valiant Gladiator show. Sure. Yeah. Well, and I mean. You look at, because I mean, it was Sam Raimi and Rob Tebert who did, yeah. who do Evil Dead. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, and I think that if you take away their sort of comedic sensibility from the show, because that was so successful about Xena and Hercules, is that Xena more so had a serious story than Hercules did, yeah. but they both had a little bit of tongue in cheekness yeah. about them that I worried, based on what I was hearing about this reboot, was not gonna necessarily be present. I did like the idea, Grace and I were chatting about this before, of them exploring the romantic relationship between Xena and Gabrielle, which is something that was always very heavily implied yeah, in the series. At, but never, without never ever being outright. It. Yeah. What, we weren't quite at the point that Willow and Tara had been a couple on Buffy the Vampire Slayer yet, but yeah. Xena was one of the first shows that I was like Explored. really, truly obsessed with. It's one of the first things I ever read or wrote fan fiction for. Whoa, uh, yes. wrote oh fan fiction God. for? Yeah. This Such is like finding win. out when Elaine wrote the Murphy Brown on <laughs> Seinfeld. What? Um, yeah, so I mean, it's it's a show that's really near and dear to my heart, and and on top of that, where it's can like, we find this fanfic? Uh, it, I never published that fanfic. We're getting it. Where is it? It was I wrote like backstory about Callisto as a child, who was like what? the evil. This is just getting sort of better and better. Warlord Sassy Princess Tuesdays is my favorite. Sassy anyway, Tuesday on guys, I really fire. Love, I really love Xena. Um, I used to play. <laughs> we used to play Xena and Hercules on the playground yes. in in uh, fourth grade okay. all the time. I was Xena. Um, yeah. So well, I hope you wouldn't hurt. Uh, God, I adore you. Yes. yes. Fantastic. So there you go, guys. Uh, well, Twitter just I'm exploded with glad, requests. Glad that the uh, reboot is not going forward but if they ever wanted to do a continuation with <laughs> Lucy and uh, uh oh, it, and Renee O'Connor who plays uh, Gabrielle I would be totally down for that Love also it. if uh, any of uh, Lucy Lawless's PR reps are watching <laughs> I have her mirror she came into the studio and she left it and I use it every day so thank you <laughs> but if you want it back that's totally fine I'll totally give it back it's not weird <laughs> um, all right, right what's next Grace <laughs> next we're gonna chat about um, episode 10 of AMC's Preacher aired last night when is this show just going to end? Yeah. I mean, like this needs 10 episodes or even eight. I, I don't even know if we'll I was do actually reviews surprised. Next I know. How, much is, how many more episodes Three, do we have? Three. It's 13 episodes. Oh, yeah. yeah. This should have been eight episodes. And, it, and it's unfortunate because it started so strong. And there are still some good moments. Like, I enjoyed the stuff with. Tulip cooking and pancakes. Me too. And the <laughs> dynamic between the two of them is my is my yeah. favorite part of the show right now. It's Sometimes, my only part of the show that I really care about right now. Yeah, when they do like all this like tongue in cheek religion like stuff, it's kind of like it's for shock value only. Yes. Yeah. It really is for shock value only. Like the whole Jesus sex montage and like the weird kid being the Messiah. The yeah. like the whole him telling like the bishop and the yeah. pope and all these kind well, of things. I'm like when they were trying to keep yeah. the Messiah secret from Jesse and not exposing exactly who he was. When when again they were talking to like the cardinal and the pope, 
and they brought up the kid, I was yeah. like, oh, it's going to be a, a, a Joffrey. I, yeah, that's what we were That was what about. I was hoping it was yes. going to be, but it wasn't. Instead, it was a living, inbred dog child. It's right. Man named person. Humperdinck. Humper, Humperdew. <laughs> again, Humperdinck. Again, Humperdinck. again, it's just for shock value to be offensive. It's not funny. Well, yeah, it's I, not yeah. Like, like, it, wasn't, it wasn't well done enough to be not offensive. It wasn't funny enough to be not offensive. It's, and I'm... It's yes. hard to offend me. It's, yeah. it's like, very hard to offend me. And I was watching this and yes. I was uncomfortable. It's, I was like, I don't want to see that. I no, equate it to you. if Dan Harmon didn't push as far as he does on Rick and Morty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because there's some stuff on Rick and Morty where you're like, that is awful. Right. But it's so funny because... But that's also animated. Yes. So you can get away yeah, with like a, a five thousand percent more. On this, it literally is, is just, it's almost like a slap in our face of like, fuck religion, we're high. This yeah, funny yeah, and they're me. all like, oh, but wouldn't it be cool if they called each other bro? And yeah, I'm like, like no, it's not funny. And like, having like modern day English with Jesus and Mary Magdalene. Yeah, there's, it's like, yeah, I know. And they're, yeah. I mean, yeah. Again. My inner nerd was like, they don't, they didn't speak English. And then I was like, why am I, like, that's not, yeah. this is not the I'm place. Fall, I'm just falling off. I, I really am. I, I, I don't know. L yeah. Let's just get to the end of the season at this point. I, I don't, I don't get it. I know. When I see it on our so, rundowns, I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, somebody tweeted at me yesterday. Can you think of any show? Sorry if I forget. I, again, you, I thank you for all your tweets all the time. Yeah. But, uh, said, is there any other show you guys can remember that makes the show the, that the lead makes the show unwatchable, like Preacher? And I was like, well, that's ouch, a pretty yeah, good point. <laughs> I, I don't no know offense, because Dominic Cooper, Dominic Cooper's a great actor, just and I, sucks in this role. This role is terrible. It is. It, it that's exactly what it is. It's a it's an awful role. I just don't like anything. I don't care about the Jesse storyline. The one story where he sacrificed part of his soul to give a soul to the Cowboys so he could send him to hell, but he really just sent him into a river. Right. Uh, When's that, he coming back? That was interesting. And then other than that, I feel like Jesse is just so self-absorbed. And terrible. I just, yeah, I don't care. Uh, people about are probably out there going like, like why well, you guys keep talking about this show if you hate it so much? I don't know. I, 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 tell us, tell it's us a to great stop. question. We might just <laughs> wait till the your finale. theories for yeah. why we keep talking about it. Because we need some <laughs> actual also, TV to talk about because we're just yeah, waiting we'll for fall, fall season TV to explode to, like, on our face. It's happening. It's yep. happening very soon. Right. Tuesday. Phrasing <laughs> is good. All right, what's next? Grace. <laughs> we're going to go to Emma, Emma, Emma Mason. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this is hilarious. Um, so. Part of the reason that there is so much visual medium in Japan as opposed to simply written stuff is because there's so many there's, characters. Yes, there are three different alphabets. Yes. So kanji is the one that is like every single symbol means a whole word. Holy and cow. then uh, katakana is the one for English sounding sounds. And then your sort of basic alphabet is hiragana, which is again a it's a phonetic alphabet. So basically, if you can read the hiragana characters, you cannot mispronounce the word. And there's a new smartphone game. So uh, so in Japan, smartphone games are incredibly popular. And there's a new one to help, you, help you learn hiragana, the, what is it, 46 characters of hiragana. Okay. And people, a lot of the times, will use sort of mnemonic uh, phrases to help you remember what each of the little symbols mean. I had a great app when I was in Japan for learning hiragana mm -hmm. and got a lot of practice reading the vending machines. But in this game, <laughs> all of the hiragana are cute boys. Oh, way to go, Emma. <laughs> so each hiragana, each, uh, each uh, hiragana symbol is assigned uh, an attractive young man to help you remember, and there's games within it. And uh, okay. yeah, it just it's coming out this fall, so... You know, hopefully we'll get uh, an American version of it. Hot anime that alphabet would, games. Yeah, ha hot anime alphabet games. <laughs> Nailed it. What's I next? I am here for it. Uh, so, Outlaw Stars started re-airing this weekend on Toonami Uncut. It's so funny. I watched all of the show on Toonami when it originally aired, but it was very edited because it was in that after-school block. And now watching it on Adult Swim Toonami, which is on Saturdays, I had seen it uncut before, but I have much more vivid memories of the edited version. So I was like, this is, oh my goodness, there's a lot of like blood and boobs in this show, uh, <laughs> but not not in like a gross way. It's I, I feel like this show really gets overshadowed a lot of the time by Cowboy Bebop, which people tend to recommend over it, which I mean, both Outlaw of them Star are space and, operas. And Cowboy Bebop sounds familiar, like sound alike. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, they are both space westerns. Yes. Uh, but... Yeah, it's it's really good. The first episode, you meet Ice Hilda, who Gene ultimately gets the Outlaw Star from, and 
She's a badass, man. I love it. I really enjoyed reading this. You know what I've noticed this. about most a- anime pictures that we throw up on the graphics? They all have, like, really spiky hair. Oh, yeah. The, the hair in Outlaw Star is particularly like, I mean, spiky. Look, they all have, like, the same, like, emo haircut that yeah. looks pretty fucking sweet. I wish I had yeah. that haircut. Yeah, well, and Jim, Jim Hawkins, the one who's in the, in the front with the blonde hair there, he's one of the... Frosted tips more. He's a uh, well. It's just the way it's shadowed there. Uh, yeah, he actually just has blonde hair. Uh, uh, but he's one of the tips? best like <laughs> anime child characters ever. Like he's yeah. constantly calling Gene out on his shit every time he's fucking excellent. Gene. Like damn goddamn it, flirting Gene. with ladies or whatever. It's great. It's it's a really fun show. Uh, uh, I'm excited to keep rewatching it. Uh, and then finally, uh, My Hero Academia season two, episode twenty. Well, we this got- dude's got green hair. Yeah. But still spiky. Well, I mean, sure. his his name is Midoriya, and Midori is green, so. Oh, like Midori. I see what they did like there. Like Midori liqueur. Exactly. It's melon. Yeah. Yep. Really, Midori sours. I got drunk on those. I was like 14 <laughs> and threw up green. It was disgusting. Oh, yeah. uh, everyone is now there. back in school. <laughs> they are they are done with their internships, and we get a little more uh, backstory. So heroes have to take internships? Yeah. Yeah, because they're, they're going to be professional superheroes uh. someday, so they have to intern with other Superheroes or with other superhero agencies. That's smart. That and is smart. Yeah. Some prep. Yeah. And and Midoriya is actually so basically everybody in this world is born with a superhero power, but it can get really diluted over time to the point that you don't necessarily actively show that you have a power. So Midoriya really had no quirk at all, but he inherited the one for all from his hero, All Might. And in this episode, you find out the origins of the one for all and how it came from this other quirk, the all for one, where basically this guy who's now a villain and is the head of the League of Villains was able to take quirks from people and force them into other people. And he tried to do that to his sickly brother, and that was how the one for all was born. It was it was really interesting. <laughs> it, was, it was nice getting a lot of uh, backstory on I'm gonna it. I'm going to take so. notes on that. I blacked yeah, out. What happened? Hey. What happened? All right, M-M-M-M-A-Mason. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. I don't know why it gets a golf clap, but it just feels right. It does feel right. All right, let's do a couple Twitter questions. What do you say, Grace? All right, I say yes. <laughs> um, so from our friend at Mr. MeSeeks86. Oh, nice. Uh, best show that can be enjoyed by three different generations. Mm. Cheers. All right, generations. Oh. Cheers. Cheers is a good one. Cheers is a good one. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like, I mean... I, my mom and I used to watch ER together, and I was like 13, yeah. and she was 55. <laughs> you know? So, like, that had, I mean, ER is kind of like a transcendent show. I, I, I know it still holds up for me, and I know that a lot of people, like, a younger generation is really getting into Friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Like my little niece and nephew love like it. For Seinfeld or like Golden Girls. Yeah. Ooh, Golden Gold, Girls. Golden Girls is a great example. In in my yeah. family, we always, it was a lot of the Nick at Night stuff. It was like Bewitched. Oh, uh, yeah. You know? I like that. It's so, oh, that's fun. so fun. And yeah. even TGI Friday. TGI Friday. Oh. TGIF still right, like holds Boy up. Meets World. Boy Meets World. Oh, family oh, Matters. Man. Yes. Growing Pains. Gro- oh, growing Pains. But also, like, even like Breaking Bad. Like, I, I Bad could for sure get my parents into Breaking Bad. Yes. Yeah. Maybe not my grandma. See, I my beanie. She's eighty five. Her and I loved You're Friday Night Lights. Oh, so, Friday Night Lights. Oh, yeah, I told, I got my whole family. Yeah, to Friday I was like twenty five, and she was seventy five, and she'd call me after each episode. She'd be like, can you believe Coach Taylor? I'm like, <laughs> I know. This is amazing. amazing. Yeah, she's Please awesome. Adopt me. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do one more. All right, so we're gonna do one from my friend at Chad MW Ten. Does it concern you that Evan Goldberg has said there's no planned ending for Preacher? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't think they even have a plan for each episode. I think they just go in there. Sometimes they I feel like they just Jesus. like shoot a bunch of shit and edit it together, and they're yes. like, "Yep, do so it." So like ja- Josh Trank in the fantastic, like, like the Fantastic Four movie from a little while back, mm-hmm. and just like went in there with footage, and they were like, "Good luck." That, and that is really what <laughs> yeah. it feels like. That, because again, the episodes are so inconsistent and the scenes don't all feel like they go together. Yeah, it's like we were talking about off air. Like sometimes I feel like the show is like my angsty teenage daughter who's like, I don't know who I am. And I'm like, I don't know who you are either. Right. Please <laughs> work through it. Yeah. And you have moments where you're connecting and you love her and you're getting along and then moments where you're like, and then she's a little you? shithead and you're like, go to your room. Like, <laughs> totally. Right? I, no, 100%. All right, let's do one more. You got a little time. So oh, okay. One more. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Let's see. Let's do uh, this one. Uh, oh, we already did that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to do this one because I love facial hair. Would you like to see Game of Thrones character characters grow facial hair when a big chunk, chunk of time has passed, similar to what Rome did? 
Heavy stuff, guys. Heavy stuff. Well, I mean, listen, it takes a while to grow the beard. Uh, I mean, obviously, you can have the prosthetic beard. Sometimes those look terrible. Uh, obviously, on a show like Game of Thrones, <laughs> like on Unabomber, the best beard. like yeah. Paul Betty's <laughs> yeah. horrible beard. Ooh, I'm that's like, rough. no. That's rough. But on a show like Game of Thrones, you'd figure they'd have really nice beard people that would get you awesome beards. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't Dream know what this is cool. What I'm saying is I'm that, John like, listen, they have people person. that do the wigs. They can yeah. also get people to do really nice beards. Yeah, I think I think time time lapse beards. Like Ryan Gosling's in Notebook. That's like the perfect example. <laughs> <laughs> yes, beards are important. Beards are important. I feel like they're a shortcut for yes. showing that time has passed and maybe things have been a little rough. Gotcha. Because you haven't had time to shave. <laughs> like okay. five o'clock shadow. Yeah. Awesome. All right, uh, that's it. Clouder TV talk. Hashtag it. Uh, Twitter questions. Thank you guys. Before we get out of here, let's do it. Of the day. <laughs> if you could turn any animal into a zombie to do your bidding, what would it be? Mm-hmm. A la, spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, I would for sure have to do a peregrine falcon. Oh. Because oh. peregrine falcons <laughs> are, that's exactly uh, what they sound like. Is that yeah. a they are vicious as shit. They're yeah. savages. Talons. And they're like tiny and they're fast. And I could, he could like fly around and do my bidding. Peregrine falcon. Peregrine yeah. falcon, go ahead. I think for me, like, my gut wants to say tiger because I love tigers, okay. but I think you know, we found out a lot about Emma Fife today. <laughs> like she wrote Xena or your princess fan here. fiction. <laughs> she lived in Japan. She loves smartphone apps with hot boys, and she, and and she loves tigers. She wants pets, tiger. I, I do love tigers. Great, uh, but I think what I would actually pick is some form of primate, some sort of little monkey, because they're uh, they're crafty. Ooh, they like hands. a capuchin mm-hmm. monkey, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They're crafty. They're, pretty good. they're like mm-hmm. scrappy too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't mess with a capuchin monkey i would want to get like a i don't want something that's mean i would want something like a nicer animal maybe like a bigger dog to be like hey grab me a beer and it goes and gets me a beer <laughs> they like, don't have thumbs. They i don't know but they can it. like reach in <laughs> 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 all right all right all right over. i'll buy that like a nice like a nice puppy because like if i oh. if my dog died i'd be like really upset but then if he was a zombie puppy he could do all the kind of fun stuff he just would have green eye, blue eyes and kind of try and kill me in my sleep but that's fine <laughs> But like it's good. But it's like good. you have that yeah. beer, so you're good. So cool. <laughs> game of Thrones beard, my game of beard. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for us on a sassy Tuesday on Clatter TV. Talk before we get out of here. Emma Fife, where can the good people find you, you on the can internet? Find me at my name, Emma Fife, E M M A F Y F F E. If you guys want to keep talking about anime and stuff, be sure to <laughs> tune into Hyper RPG tonight. We are launching a new anime show, six o'clock p.m. Pacific Whoa. time. Twitch.tv slash Hyper RPG. It is called Hyper Otaku. It's going to be a really fun time. So you. You should come check it out live. All right. Grace Hancock. Dope. Um, and I'm Grace Hancock. You guys can find me online everywhere, like literally everywhere, at Mrs. Grace Face. Legit everywhere, yeah. it's including Harry Potter land. Uh, I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram, The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube, WGN Movies for America every Monday night. We're back tomorrow, 11 a.m. PST. <laughs> we're here every day. I, I didn't mean to sound like we're back tomorrow. No, we are back tomorrow. Uh, I, we don't say it enough here on the show, but the turnaround from movie talk to TV talk is really tough. So Adam Smith and Cody Hall do an amazing, amazing job. So thank Yay. you both for always doing that for us. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for sending in Twitter questions. We'll see you tomorrow on Collider TV Talk. As always, put down the book. Pick up the remote. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.